Hello, everybody. Welcome along to Sportsbet TV. Me, Paul Alster, here with you uh, once again, and I'm looking forward to some very, very interesting racing across Britain and Ireland on uh, this coming Saturday, the 7th of May. And I have four selections for you across four meetings. Uh, we're at Ascot, Haydock, Lingfield, and over in Ireland at Nace. So we're hoping uh, for a good show from those four selections. I'll come to those very soon. If you're joining for the first time, then please press the uh, subscribe button just below this screen. And then you'll be able to hear my views on racing on a regular basis um, for all the weekend action and for the major uh, midweek festivals as we go through the year. Well, if you happen to be with us last weekend, of course, um, it was uh, a very exciting uh, two days, as it turned out, because the four selections all did us proud. And a very big thank you to everybody who's posted very, very uh, kind messages uh, below last week's uh, video. It's great to hear that so many of you were on with the doubles, trebles and uh, the Yankees and lucky 15s. And I managed to make uh, above all three. And that really, um, it's very rewarding for me to hear that people are uh, just, uh, you know, managing to uh, benefit a little bit um, when uh, I do uh, hit the target. As we know, when you're tipping big odds, there's always going to be times where you have uh, thin periods. It's much uh, easier to tip the shorties and hit one in three average, as so on and so forth. But when you're tipping big prices, it is always a challenge. And when you get four out of four uh, placing um, in a, an each way uh, multiple, it, it, it is very, uh, very good. Now, of course, um, the big hit there was Cardam who I was very, very sweet on. I did feel the bookies had priced him up over with, with his, his odds reflecting his form over six and seven furlongs, not over five. And that proved to be the case. I recommended him at 12 to one. He did go out to 14 to one. I saw quite a few of you had had 14 to one. He was then back down in the hour before the race, went off seven to one, made all the running and stayed on uh, to hold them all at bay in the Palace House Stakes. That was a great moment. I actually think that on a flutter track, he'll be even better because he's so fast. I could see him uh, really making his presence felt in the Nunthorpe later in the season, Cardham. So that was good. But of course, um, he could so nearly have already been a double at that point because Turntable, the first selection, only just got beaten earlier on the card. He proved quite a tricky ride. And I thought Holly Doyle did really well. He was hanging and a bit unbalanced which for a horse who's won a few times on the track was very strange. Um, he stayed on very powerfully, and I actually thought he was going to come and win half a furlong out in the end. He just failed, but it was a, a good effort at 12 to 1 each way. And then in the 2,000 guineas, well, as I said, the front three in the betting looked pretty strong, and I did expect them all to go well, and Caribus was a good winner of, I think, an above-average uh, guineas. Uh, but I was absolutely delighted with the performance of Aidan, uh, finishing fourth, for the each way money of 33 to one, which became a general price. And uh, he really did stick on well. And I see that Roger Charlton uh, is looking at uh, options of the French Derby or even the English Derby. I think the French might be the way to go actually for him, but um, it was a, a lovely effort. And then of course we had to wait no, nearly 24 hours to see if the fourth selection was gonna make it in the 1000 guineas. That was Zelly, the French Raider. And I have to say, Two furlongs out going into the dip, I'm afraid. I thought uh, we've done our money there. We're not going to get the big multiple up. But all credit to Tom Marquand, who kept at her, and credit to the filly, who kept responding all the way up the hill. She'll stay further, won't she? Uh, she got up in the last couple of strides to finish fourth, just, just edging out Sandrine, completing that uh, each way Yankee or lucky 15 that you did. So that was really terrific. Now, the profit for the each way bets uh, on last Saturday to the level £10 stakes was £228. Of course, that doesn't include the multiples. That's a, another story. But I don't factor that into my figures, of course. Uh, so overall, the month of April ended after a few ups and downs. We ended £100 up to level stakes. So got to be really delighted with that. So that was last week. And of course, that's been and gone. Now we move on to this weekend. And the first of my four selections that I hope are going to provide us with a bit of a shout is in the opener at Haydock, um, the 120, a mile and a half, three-year-old handicap. Now, normally I don't focus on races um, 
this low in the grade in Britain. I think I can't remember. I think it's a grade five, class five, not to seventy. But there are a few interesting runners here, so uh, I got tempted. Uh, Twelve runners, good to soft ground at Haydock. I see there's no rain, so it could dry out a touch out there on the old uh, East Lanks Road. Now, assessing three-year-old handicaps in the first third of the season is always very challenging because there are horses that are improving as they're put into new trips. There are horses making handicap debuts. And then there are those who did well last season but haven't really trained on at three. And a lot of that is unknown at this stage. So there is a little bit of guesswork, or a little bit more guesswork, I should say, than is usually the case when we're trying to figure things out. Now, in this particular race, there's only 10 pounds in the handicap between the top weight and the bottom weight. So that helps to make things, I think, a little easier. Now, there are a few obvious eye catchers, including the top weight, Fearless Bay. He's won a couple of times on the all weather at around 10 furlongs, and his trainer, um, Ed Dunlop, is doing really well actually this season and after a few quiet turns and this horse didn't run at all uh, badly on his uh, seasonal um, um, return on turf at Nottingham. He's won since on, at Wolverhampton. Then you've got Andrew Balding, City Streak. He was uh, beaten a length at Wolverhampton first time out this year uh, in April and that was a promising effort and he, he showed plenty of promise as well last season. Now, a horse called Down to the Kid uh, for Ivan Furtado, I love the name. That's what they used to say to me when I was the youngest SP man in the betting ring and I'd have a bit of a bet myself. And they just shout down the bookies, it's down to the kid. Um, so anyway, down to the kid has won two uh, on the Southern all weather over a mile and a half. Um, but will he stay this trip on turf? Uh, I, I'm just not, not quite so sure uh, about him, actually, uh, this uh, down to the kid. Then you've got Caesar's Palace. Uh, a fair on first time out at Nottingham over 10 furlongs at April, um, finished second, staying on well. There's another one called Barack Star for Mick Shannon, first time in a handicap. I'll be looking out for any market moves there. But then um, we've got Tim Easterby's runner, who was uh, run at Red Car, was fourth recently, but had previously been beat just a short head caught in the last stride over a mile and a quarter. Uh, at Red Car. Now, he is an interesting runner, but in the race in which he was just touched off, there was a horse that went into my notebook, and his name is Mr. Camacho. And Mr. Camacho is my choice. Trained by the evergreen style icon, uh, that is Mick Easterby, 91 years young now, and um, Mick, of course, trains them uh, in partnership with his son, David, these days. Um, Mick still, though, very much the figurehead. Uh, and Jim Crowley um, is an eye-catching bookie. This is the first time Jim has ridden for the combination of Mick and David Easterby. He has ridden a few times for Mick in the past. I think it's a very eye-catching bookie. Now, Mr Camacho had three fair runs last season in novice states at around seven and eight furlongs. And then um, he was beaten, quite well beaten at the end of the term on his handicap bow at York. It might have been that he'd just gone over the top for the season. So many horses by October with their coats changing and the weather cooling down have kind of had enough. Now, he made his reappearance in that race at Red Car that I mentioned featuring Zimmerman. He was 25 to 1 that day, so no real interest in him. And he was towards the rear of the field and not doing a great deal until about two furlongs out when he started to make a little bit of headway. And then from the furlong pole over the mile and a quarter trip, he really did stay on very well. And uh, if I had been doing the... the Racing Post comments or the Sporting Life, so used to do them both back in the day, I would certainly have given him an NNTC comment, which for those of you in the know means never near to challenge. And that's a bit of code really for uh, race readers. It means not sure that he was actually teed up for that particular outing. Now he's stepping up an extra two furlongs, which I think is going to really suit him. And I think will suit him better than it will suit Zimmerman. And uh, the jockey booking, as I say, has caught the eye. So up an extra two furlongs with a run under his belt with Jim Crowley on board. Um, and this horse on the dam side certainly is bred to see out uh, at least a mile and a half. I think he's interesting. But this is one of those races at the time of this recording on uh, Friday lunchtime where there are no prices available with any firms. They're boxing a bit uh, clever on this race. Um, the Racing Post have forecast uh, Mr. Camacho at 14 to 1. Uh, I would be happy to take 12 to 1 if that's there. 
Uh, it might turn out I'm completely wrong. They go up 20, so look out for it. Uh, but I'm just guessing 20 to one, 12 to 1 as an estimate, and I'm sure they'll be betting a few firms going four places, the likes of Skybet and a few others. So Mr. Camacho will be my each-way bet in the opener at Haydock for good old Mick Easterby and young David and Jim Crowley in the 120. And then I take you to Lingfield, um, two and a half hours later, actually, at 3.50 on Saturday. We've got the classic trials there, uh, the Oaks and Derby trials, neither of which appeals greatly. I saw the classic trials this uh, week at Chester, none of which, for me, were overly uh, exciting. Um, but at Lingfield in the 3.50, there's a Group 3 race, the Chartwell Phillies stakes uh, on the straight seven furlongs. It's good to firm ground forecast, and there are eight runners making each way uh, betting um, uh, a real um, possibility. Now, for me, this looks to be a, a below par Group 3 race because I don't think there's a horse rated above 100 in the race. So it's a Group 3 in name, but probably more listed level than anything else. So bear that in mind. And because of that, I think it could be right for a surprise. Now, She Do, trained by uh, Roger Varian, was progressive last term, reached a, a rating of 99. And I could well see this one running well, um, fresh, uh, first time out. Hugo Palmer, who, of course, is now teamed up with Michael Owen in Cheshire, has got Chokoya, a winner twice at six furlongs last year. Interesting to see how it fares at this extra furlong. And then uh, one that is a real eye catcher is the Irish Raider, Henry de Bromhead, with a runner here in this Group 3 Phillies race. And that is Wren's Breath, who is very unexposed and looked good when she won a six furlong listed race at Nace on her second start. Then she didn't quite fire when sent over to Doncaster for a group three over seven furlongs uh, last time out at the end of last season, finishing eighth. So she's interesting and money for that one, I think will be very well worth noting. Now, Richard Hannon and Jamie Spencer team up with Symphony Perfect, uh, who won at Newmarket over six furlongs in listed company in October. And this one has made two solid efforts this term and is actually rated just in there on the 100 mark. But I'm just not overly convinced about the horse. And then you've got Pearl Glory for the up-and-coming trainer, Kevin Philip Ardefoy. Um, This could be a big danger if fully wound up. It's got two wins over six furlongs. It was second in the group, three over six furlongs. Um, and uh, faded towards the end of last season in the group three. But as I say, October form can be a bit uh, misleading. But after really giving this one quite a bit of thought, the horse I've come up with is one of the outsiders of the field. And this is Lola Showgirl. Uh, for anybody that remembers Barry Manolo and Cobra Cabana. Lola Showgirl, David Lochner, good trainer, and Tom Marquand, who did us that great favour with Zelly last week. He's on board uh, for David Lochner. Now, this filly, Lola Showgirl, you may recall from last season, because she, she was really progressive. She started fairly lowly handicapping really uh, but then she went on and won a handicap at York uh, in the spring over seven furlongs off a mark of 79 but after that she went to Royal Ascot and she won the Kensington Palace handicap over a mile where she beat a horse called Fion and that one just won a, a good race at Chester um, this week so the form has continued to be frank time and again from that race um, the form it has to be said of Lola Showgirl faded a little bit in the second half of the season. It seems to me that on the evidence of last season, she's probably best in the spring and early summer. But she reappeared at Kempton after quite a long break um, in April, just last month, over a mile in a listed race. Uh, She looked fresh and well, and she led until she was headed two furlongs out where I expected her to uh, drop away in what was a competitive heat. And, um, but she didn't. She kept going really well in the end, keeping on again to be fourth and only beaten two lengths. Um, And to me, she's already shown that she's trained on well. And I think she'll be sharper for that run. And the seven furlongs, I believe, is probably her optimum trip, a a really sort of well-run seven furlongs. The yard of David Lofton is in decent form. And while she has plenty to find on the bare figures with some of these, I'm sure that uh, David Lofton, who could be running her in handicaps and maybe picking up a nice price, he wouldn't be running her and risking being close to horses rated a stone higher and absolutely blasting his handicap mark apart if he didn't think she has a real proper chance of getting some uh, good black type in this race. Uh, she's a front runner, 
So I think she's going to be out there uh, trying to burn them off and she will stay. And there are quite a few potential non-stayers in this race. I'd also say for those of you that play on the exchanges, I'm sure that whatever prize her SP is, she's going to trade much shorter in running because she'll be up there bowling along. And I'm sure she'll have a few in trouble to out. So there's always a chance to arbitrage and get out for those of you that are interested in the exchanges. Anyway, um, so she's the one for me. 20 to 1 each way offered at the time of this recording with quite a few firms. Paddy Power and Betfair, who of course are the same firm really. Uh, Bet Victor, Unibet, Betfred, Boyle Sports and Lambrooks are amongst those offering 20 to 1 each way. And there are three places, of course. It might be that when the betting heats up Friday evening into Saturday, some firms will pay four places. So do shop around and look out for that. That's Lola Showgirl. Nice, tasty price each way. Lingfield 350. And then just a few minutes later at Ascot, uh, the 405 is the Victoria Cup, one of the toughest handicaps of the year. And as you know, I don't ask pick them. You know, plenty of the uh, tipsters, they'll be finding you a nice five to four shot in a little novice stakes or maiden with six or seven runners. Well, there's 28 runners going in the Victoria Cup, uh, seven furlongs down the very stiff um, straight course at Ascot, where it's uphill all the way from the half mile pole. The going is good. Now the draw is going to play a big part in this, no doubt about it. But generally, if you look at the trends over recent years, uh, the higher numbers sent it to high have held some sort of an advantage. And um, I have just decided to focus my gaze really on the horses drawn center to high. Uh, the favorite, who's an eight to one shot, showing just what an open race this is, is Charles Hales's Dark Shift. Now he's drawn four. Now it could be that he just makes a, a beeline onto the far rail and stays there and does it like Bielsa did for us in the Gold Cup at Air in September. You remember I tipped him to come up the stands rails alone. He did it, beat everything. Well, maybe Dark Shift might do that, but it would be a hell of a performance if he does. Now, Charlie Appleby, of course, uh, carrying all before him. And uh, he's got a couple of Godolphin runners here. One ruler who's drawn in 19, not a bad draw. Third in a group two at May down in January. He's got man of the moment, James Doyle on board. And Path of Thunder, who ran in the same group two and finished fourth at May down, uh, has since finished second of three in a little uh, listed race at Leicester. He's got young Harry Davis, who claims um, seven pounds. Uh, so uh, those two certainly will have their supporters. Clive Cox won the race last year with River Nymph, who's already been a market mover from early 25 and 33 on Thursday, down to around 16 to one. And River Nymph is drawn high. And I did give it some consideration. It's only two pounds higher than last year. But he's also got Aratus, a very unexposed four-year-old who was three from three last season, ran no sort of race on its reappearance, but that was too bad to be true. And he's got Downs Fever, who was third to Accidental Agent, good old Accidental Agent, of course, former Group 1 winner, who's got top weight here. Uh, but Downs Fever um, is drawn in three, and that's just put me off a little bit, despite a good run behind Accidental Agent at HQ. Now, um, the trainer, who I mentioned a few moments ago with a very exotic name, Kevin Philippard de Foy, born in Belgium, uh, is making a name for himself. It's quite a long name as well. So most people call him KPF, which is what we're going to be calling him. Um, and I think he's going to be a real big star trainer in Britain over the next decade. He knows the game back to front. He has had some great experience. He worked for John Ox and was involved in the training of See the Stars. He worked for Cricket Head, the great Cricket Head in France. He worked for Christopher Clemont in the United States, top trainer originally from France. And then, of course, he was assistant to James Fanshaw and was involved in preparing horses like the Tin Man, amongst others, for Group 1 success. So KPF is a proper trainer, and he is um, definitely one that people in the know feel is going to be a trainer to have on your side. And indeed, this season... 73 runners so far and 16 winners, 22% uh, strike rate, further 16 plays. That means half of his horses are finishing in the money, um, and so they're in good form. Problem is, he runs two in this race, and they've both got cracking chances. Nice thing is, they're both drawn high, and I found it quite hard to choose between them. Franny Norton, great senior jockey, pound for pound, among the best jockeys in the weighing room still, especially at Chester. 
Uh, he's on a horse called Al Ray, who's um, drawn in 24. Three wins for this horse on the old weather, over seven and eight furlongs, so it will stay. It had never run on turf until it uh, ran at Haydock uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and it ran an absolute blinder. Uh, up there all the way. Bonnie Gray, this one, you'll easily spot it. It's going to go prominent and race uh, up with the pace. Just caught in the last uh, 100 yards or so, beaten half a length. Um, and Al Ray, only gone up a pound, unexposed with only one run on turf, um, could be one uh, that is going to go very close. But in the end, I've gone for uh, KPF's other horse, Vafortino, trained by Kevin Philip Foy. And ridden this time by a jockey with an equally exotic name, Benoit de la Sayette, who claims seven pounds. Now, of course, if you follow the game, you know all about Benoit de la Sayette. Uh, he was taken on by John Gosden. Such was his talent as an outstanding young kid in pony club racing. He made a huge impact uh, very, very quickly. He won the Lincoln, first of all. Uh, and then, of course, he did, as kids often do, silly things. He got involved in a bit of a druggy thing. He was suspended. Uh, he really blew it. Uh, he's apologised. He came back about uh, five or six weeks ago. He's ridden again for uh, John Gosden, which is good. He's already shown the talent is still there and he'll be very keen to make up for lost time. Uh, now, Vaffatino uh, used to be with Joseph O'Brien and had some good form as a two-year-old, beaten only just over two lengths in a group three, lost its way last season a little bit, and was sold to KPF um, to join his yard, and he had it gelded straight away. And that seems to have made a difference. It returned after six months off, and it ran very, very well in uh, late March at Newcastle. And it looked all over the winner, to be honest. It ran an absolute blinder until it was caught by one of Jamie Spencer's specials, one of those last to first, not moving until the last 50 yards. Uh, Victor is on, bless him. Um, any other day, um, I'm quite sure Vaffatino would have won. But on that occasion, he missed out very, very narrowly. He showed he retains all his ability. And now he's coming back on turf. He's also got Benoit de la Sayette on board, whose seven-pound claim will be very valuable. Now, overall, when Benoit de la Sayette and KPF have teamed up over the last few seasons, remarkably, they've got almost a 50% strike rate, seven winners from 15 runners, 47%, including this term, he's put him up on four horses and two of them have won, 50%. So this combination of the French sounding trainer and jockey, though jockey's very British, um, are red hot when they get together. And I think Vaffatino is going to run a massive race. He's 12 to 1 each way at the time of this recording for seven places uh, with Bet365, plenty of others offering six places. I think Vaffatino, hopefully drawn on the right side for a stable in form and a jockey with a point to prove, will go well. And you never know, it might be a one-two for the yard with Al Ray, um, who I think will also run very well indeed. That's in the Victoria Cup at Ascot on Saturday at 4.05. And then very quickly, because my lunch is waiting, um, the Nays 5.35, uh, a six furlong handicap. As you know, uh, I love my Irish racing, I present lots of Irish racing. And by the way, somebody asked if I'm commentating. Yes, I've come back to commentating in the last month or two. So after a 15 year hiatus, back uh, calling them again. Uh, anyway, six furlong, three year old handicap at NACE. Again, really tough, these three year old handicaps, but 16 runners are likely to be paying five places, plenty of firms. So look out for that. Yielding ground, loads of potential improvers. But without going through too many of them, there are two that caught my eye when I glanced through this race. And it, again, quite hard to choose between the pair. The first of them is Magnifico, or Magnifico, trained by the excellent Johnny Murder and ridden by rising star uh, Irish apprentice Ben Cohen. Now, this horse has uh, progressed all the way through its two-year-old campaign. It won a six furlong nursery at the Curra in September of 70. It then ran very well off 85 at Cork. Um, and uh, last time out, it was there to Drombeg uh, Banner, who uh, reopposes. Uh, that was five weeks ago. Uh, Magnifico is £10 better off this time. And this time is stepping up from five to six furlongs, which is his optimum trip. And I think he's going to run really well. 
but in the expectation that it's going to be a bit of a bigger price, and there are no prices up, so I'm guessing here, my choice is a horse called My Eyes Adore You. So we've got this musical theme going on, Lola Showgirl and then a bit of Frankie Valley, My Eyes Adore You. Um, Fozzy Stack trains My Eyes Adore You, and Andrew Slattery is on board, good uh, young rider. Now this horse... Um, makes its handicap debut here. Uh, it had a couple of runs as a two-year-old, started off by finishing second on its debut to a horse who's really made a name for itself called Marquez Panam. And uh, that uh, Marquez Panam has only once been beaten and actually won a group three at the Cara last time out. So the form is red hot. After that run, My Eyes Adore You went off favourite for a maiden at the Cura over five furlongs, but never really got into it, finished seventh. Bit disappointing. Then it had the winter off, came back uh, on the 3rd of April at Cork over seven furlongs. And I thought ran a very promising race, finishing fifth of 14. Uh, not knocked about, beaten four and a half lengths. I understand that both the winner and the second are highly regarded. And uh, I know that uh, at least the winner is probably going to be going for a group three, if not this weekend, then sometime in the near future. So again, my eyes at all you has formed uh, with horses that are um, group class potentially. And so running in a handicap for the first time, back to what I think is its optimum trip of six furlongs. And with a rating of just 78, I think it's got a, a really fair chance, my eyes adore you. As I said, there's no odds available, so I'm guessing here. But with lots of big yards with runners like Aidan O'Brien and Joe Lyons, Jesse Harrington, Ken Condon, I'd be surprised if it's any shorter than 10 to 1 each way. And with 16 runners, there should be plenty of firms paying five places. It'd be lovely if we were able to get 16s or 20s or something. But my eyes adore you is the choice for me at NACE in the 535. And I'll be doing another uh, Yankee or Lucky 15. Not to two big stakes. You don't need much on, as plenty of people found out last weekend, but they all managed to hit the frame better. So I wish you the best of luck. Whether or not you decide to choose to go with these or whether you go with your own uh, choices and gut feelings, uh, let's hope they all run well. I'll be back uh, same time next week. I won't be tipping uh, during the Dante Festival because I'm going to be on holiday midweek, but I will be back with my weekend selections. So I look forward to speaking to you then. So it's bye-bye for now from me, Paul Alster, here at Sportsbet TV. Bye-bye.